Friends, I am Ganesh Viswanathan from Department of Chemical Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. I am going to give several lectures in the second course of Chemical Reaction Engineering and today I am going to start with heterogeneous reactor analysis. So, we will start with looking at heterogeneous reactor data and the reactor design. Okay? So, we will look at the heterogeneous analysis for reactor design. So, the general algorithm for designing a reactor uh, is as follows. So, the first step is to deduce a rate law, deduce rate law. The second step is to find the mechanism behind the reaction and the third is to find the rate parameters. And the fourth step is to design a reactor using all the information that has been found from the previous three steps. So, that is the that is what we are going to start today. So, today we are going to look at the rate law and we are going to look at the mechanism and how to estimate rate parameters and then we will go march forward to the design of the reactor. So, as an example let us take the hydro demethylation of toluene whose reaction essentially follows this scheme C 6 H 5 C H 3 which hereafter I will call as T, T stands for toluene and plus hydrogen which will hereafter be called as H leads to benzene which, is, which will be henceforth called as B and methane which will be henceforth called as M. Okay. So, the objective is to design, design a packed bed reactor which will be henceforth referred to as PBR and in order to do this we need to find a rate law that is we need to find the rate of generation of toluene per unit gram of catalyst or per weight of the catalyst that is used in the packed bed reactor. So, in order to achieve this objective, let us start with the, with the experimental data. So, there has been experiments that have been performed under different conditions and different partial pressures of these different species toluene, hydrogen, methane and benzene and different combinations various experiments have been performed and the rate in terms of gram mole of toluene per gram catalyst per unit time have been measured. So, there is 16 experiments and you could actually classify them into 4 different sets. The first one and the second one by changing the partial pressure of methane and then the second one by changing the partial pressure of benzene and then the third set by varying the partial pressure of hydrogen and the fourth set by varying the partial pressures of toluene. Now, remember that partial pressure is, is a reflection of the mole fraction of each of these species. So, we can now deduce a rate law by looking at this experimental data and so as a first step let us try to see how the rate law depends on. So, dependence on let us say methane. Okay. So, we start with let us look at the dependence of methane, the concentration of methane on the rate of the reaction. Okay. So, if we look at the data here, so if you look at the first two data sets, we will see that as the partial pressure of methane is increased by 5 times, one can observe clearly from the data that the rate is hardly changing which means that the methane has a little or almost no effect on the rate of the reaction. Okay. So, so, clearly we can observe that the methane M is weakly or weakly adsorbed or 
goes directly into the gas stream. into the gas phase. So, so that is an important reduction. So, which means that methane is hardly contributing to the rate of the reaction. Methane does not affect the rate of the reaction. Okay. So, that is an important reduction that one can observe from the experimental data. So, Next, let us look at what is the dependence of benzene on the reaction rate. If you look at the second set that is runs 3, 4, 5 and 6 and you can see that there is a significant effect of benzene on the reaction rate. Particularly, if, if the partial pressure of benzene is increased, then there is a decrease in the reaction rate, overall reaction rate. So, which suggests that the concentration of the benzene has to appear in the denominator of the reaction rate. So, which means that, so if I look at the dependence, if I look at the dependence, so runs 3 and 4, they suggest that the rate decreases with increase in the benzene concentration or the partial pressure. Okay. So, this suggests that the reaction rate must somehow be proportional to the partial pressure of benzene which appears in the denominator of the rate law. This is because the rate now decreases with increase in the concentration of the benzene that is the partial pressure of benzene. So, therefore, the rate of generation of toluene which is R T prime, which now is given by 1 by, it should be approximately be proportional to 1 by 1 plus K B into P B plus other components, where K B is basically the corresponding equilibrium constant. So, next if we look at the, if we look at the data set again and we want to know what is the dependence of toluene on the reaction rate. So, let us look at the data set 11 and 12, 10 and 11 excuse me and it suggests that 10, 11 and 12 suggests that as the toluene partial pressure is increased, there is an increase in the overall reaction rate which means that at lower concentration of toluene, there is an increase in the reaction rate. However, if we go to a much higher concentration of toluene, for example, look at the run 13, 14 and 15, that a significant increase in the concentration of toluene does not have a, a, any effect or marginal that has only marginal effect on the reaction rate. Therefore, this suggests that the uh, dependence of toluene must appear both in the numerator and the denominator of the reaction rate. So, let us summarize this here. So, dependence of T, so runs 10 and 11, it suggests that at low concentrations, at low concentration of toluene, the rate increases with increase in concentration of T. And similarly, runs 14 and 15, it suggests that at high concentrations of T, rate remains constant, is almost constant. Okay. So, that is the reduction that we can get from the experimental data on the dependence of toluene concentration of toluene on the reaction rate. Okay. So, the only other component which is left is basically the hydrogen and so let us look at the experimental data again. So, the partial pressure of hydrogen if it is increased by two fold 1, 2 and 3, it appears that there is a, a linear increase in the reaction rate which means that when the partial pressure goes from 1 to 2, the reaction rate is almost double and from 2 to 3, it is almost double of that. So, this suggests that the reaction rate perhaps li depends linearly on the concentration of hydrogen. Okay. So, if we look at the dependence of 
of hydrogen on the reaction rate. So, we run 7 and 8 and 9 suggest that the rate increases linearly with the concentration of hydrogen. Okay. So, this suggests this means that the hydrogen is perhaps either not adsorbed on the surface or it is immediately goes into the it is not adsorbed on the surface or the surface coverage of hydrogen on the catalyst site is insignificant. Okay. So, therefore, now we can combine all of these different reaction uh, different observations from experimental data. So, combining the observations one can deduce that the reaction rate perhaps must have a form which looks like this. So, the it has to depend linearly on the concentration or partial pressures of hydrogen and it has to depend it, it has to increase with the concentration of toluene when the uh, concentration is lower. However, it has to remain constant when the concentration of toluene is larger. So, therefore, it has to appear both in the numerator and the denominator and similarly, the benzene has a reverse effect benzene as the concentration of benzene increases the rate decreases and therefore, it has to appear in the denominator. Okay. So, now we can convert this proportionality into an equivalence by putting a, a rate constant in front. Okay. So, if I stare at this equation you can see that the rate now is directly proportional to the uh, partial pressure of hydrogen and it appears both in the numerator and the denominator of the reaction rate for with respect to the partial pressure of toluene and then it appears in the, the partial pressure of benzene appears in the denominator of the rate expression. Okay. So, this actually provides a, a method by which you one could actually deduce what is the possible reaction rate law based on the experimental observations. This data is only an example and in general data may not be available in such a form and it may not always be possible to deduce rate law by inspection. So, the next step towards uh, finding the rate law uh, if we go back to the set of different steps which is involved. So, we have now found the rate law. So, we need to next go ahead and find the mechanism that governs this particular set of heterogeneous reaction. So, the next step is towards finding a mechanism. The next step is finding a mechanism. So, now we have to make certain assumptions here. So, if we assume if we assume that the toluene is adsorbed on the surface, so remember that from the experimental data, we observed that at low concentrations of toluene, the reaction rate actually increases with the partial pressure of toluene. However, at high concentrations or high partial pressures of toluene, the reaction rate almost remains constant, which suggests that the toluene must actually be adsorbed onto the surface. And so, based on that observation, we will make an assumption that the toluene actually is adsorbed on the surface of the catalyst at which the reaction is occurring. Okay. Then, the second important assumption we will make is that the toluene which is adsorbed on the surface, it reacts with the hydrogen which is present. And when it reacts with the hydrogen which is present, because the con partial pressure of hydrogen le affects linearly the reaction rate, we will assume that the reaction rate reaction actually occurs between the toluene which is adsorbed on the surface and the hydrogen which is present in the gas phase. Now, after the reaction is completed, the products which are formed are basically benzene and methane. Now, we observed that the methane hardly has any effect on the reaction rate, which perhaps suggests that the methane must actually directly or immediately go into the gas phase and benzene must it affects 
uh, as the as the partial pressure of the benzene increases we can see that there is a reduction in the reaction rate which suggests that the benzene actually has to uh, stay adsorbed on the surface and then later get released into the gas phase as a product okay so so this can be captured in this statement here so the reaction the toluene which is absorbed reacts with hydrogen in gas phase in gas phase and it leads to the production of benzene which is which remains adsorbed on the surface and methane which goes into the gas phase okay then as a third assumption after the benzene gets adsorbed on the surface the the product has to come out of the reactor. So, therefore, the benzene actually gets desorbed from the surface and then it goes into the gas phase and then leaves the reactor. So, this can be stated as benzene is desorbed from gas phase and then. So, you must have learnt in the previous lectures that there has to be a, a rate limiting step. So, we will assume that the heterogeneous reaction is actually a, a surface reaction limited step and this is in fact not, not a bad assumption because 75 percent of the heterogeneous reactions are actually limited by the surface reaction. So, therefore, these let us assume that it is a, a surface reaction limited It is surface reaction limited. So, let us take each of these steps one by one and then try to capture write a, a simple rate law for each of these steps. And so, there are three key steps which we have actually deducted from the experimental data and the form of the rate law. So, the first one is the adsorption. So, this is the toluene which gets adsorbed onto the catalyst surface and so this can be captured by the following reaction. This can be depicted by the following reaction. So, it is the toluene in the gas phase which actually goes and occupies a vacant site S. S represents the catalyst site at which the toluene gets adsorbed and that leads to the uh, formation of this complex which is basically the toluene and the site which is basically means that the toluene is now attached or resides on the location of the uh, catalyst site. Okay. So, we can now also represent saying that there is a, a specific constant which corresponds to the formation of or adsorption of toluene on the catalyst site and uh, also it is a it is an equilibrium process and so therefore, there can also be a, a simultaneous desorption. So, if K A corresponds to the specific constant which uh, captures the adsorption of toluene onto the site and K minus A corresponds to the desorption of the toluene from the catalyst site into the gas stream. Okay. And then the second step is the reaction. So, the, so the hydrogen which is present in the gas phase that now reacts with toluene which is residing on the catalyst site to give the to give the products where this will be benzene which is adsorbed which continues to be adsorbed on the surface plus methane which goes into the gas phase. So, this is the second step where hydrogen in the gas phase reacts with the toluene which is now adsorbed onto the surface of the catalyst site and that leads to the product formation where the benzene which is one of the product it remains adsorbed on the catalyst site and then methane is formed along with it which immediately goes into the gas phase. And the reaction rate corresponding to that can actually be here it is depicted as K s and K minus s for forward and the backward reaction. And the third step is the desorption of benzene third step is the desorption of benzene where 
where the benzene which is adsorbed onto the surface of the catalyst is now desorbed into the gas phase where benzene goes into the gas phase and leaves the and the catalyst site is emptied. Okay? And so, this reaction the specific constants can be represented as k b and k minus b. Okay? So, these are the three steps that we have identified based on the experimental data and also based on the some of these observations that we got from the experimental data. Okay? So, now what we are going to do is we are going to take each of these steps, each of these individual steps and then try to find out what is the reaction rate law and then we are going to we have identified what is the uh, we have assumed what is the uh, limiting step in each of these three which one which one of these three is a limiting step and then based on that we are going now going to find out a, a rate law for this particular heterogeneous reaction. So, let us now go into the first step of adsorption. So, let us look into the let us go a little bit deeper into the adsorption process. So, toluene in the gas phase it gets adsorbed onto the vacant site S on the catalyst and leading to the uh, T S which is the uh, site which is adsorbed with toluene and K A and K minus A are the corresponding uh, specific constants. As toluene adsorbs to the catalyst site and the catalyst and the adsorbed species reacts with hydrogen in gas phase, we assume a single site mechanism. So, the rate of adsorption can now be written as K A multiplied by the concentration of the vacant site C V multiplied by the partial pressure of toluene that is basically captures the rate at which the forward reaction is going to happen in order for toluene from the gas phase to get adsorbed onto the catalyst site minus the concentration of the or the number of concentration of the sites in which the toluene is already adsorbed divided by the corresponding adsorption equilibrium constant. Okay. So, K A is the specific constant adsorption rate adsorption constant adsorption constant and C V stands for concentration of the vacant site vacant site on the catalyst and P T is the partial pressure of toluene P T is the partial pressure of toluene and then C T S is the occupied site concentration C T S is the occupied site concentration and K T is the adsorption equilibrium constant and that is typically given by K A divided by K minus A. So, that sort of captures the rate at which the toluene in the gas phase is gets adsorbed onto the catalyst site. Okay. So, let us take a look at the uh, let us go into the details of the next step that we outlined that is the surface reaction part. So, let us look at the surface reaction. Let us look at the surface reaction. So, let us assume that it is a single site reaction where only toluene molecule which is adsorbed onto one site is what is involved in the uh, reaction in the catalytic reaction. And so, we have hydrogen which is in the gas phase plus the toluene which is now adsorbed onto the surface reacts with each other and then it leads to the formation of benzene and the methane in the gas phase. Okay. So, now we can now capture the rate at which this particular reaction occurs. So, the surface reaction rate is now given by K s multiplied by partial pressure of hydrogen into the concentration of the sites in which the toluene is actually adsorbed minus the concentration of the number of sites concentration of the sites in which the benzene is adsorbed which is a product multiplied by the partial pressure of methane divided by K s. So, the first term here corresponds to the rate of the forward reaction and the second term here corresponds to the rate of the reverse reaction. 
So, here k s is basically the, the specific constant for forward reaction. forward reaction and T H 2 corresponds to the partial pressure of hydrogen in the gas phase and C T S corresponds to the concentration of toluene number of sites in which the toluene is adsorbed and C B S corresponds to the concentration of the number of sites in which benzene is adsorbed, the product benzene is adsorbed and P M corresponds to the partial pressure of methane in the gas phase and K S is basically the corresponding equilibrium constant which is given by K S divided by K minus S. Okay. So, next we look at what look at the desorption process. So, that is the third step which is the desorption process. Now, here the benzene which is adsorbed onto the surface gets desorbed to give benzene in the gas phase and an empty site or a vacant site. And so, if the corresponding specific constants desorption constants are k b and k minus b. Then the rate can be give written as rate of desorption is given by k b into c b dot s minus k b into p b into c b, okay. where the k b corresponds to the benzene adsorption equilibrium constant and C V corresponds to the concentration of the vacant site. Remember that the reverse reaction is basically where the benzene in the gas phase can actually go and adsorb onto the vacant catalyst site and therefore, K B P B into C V tells you what is the rate at which the free benzene which is available in the gas phase gets adsorbed onto the catalyst surface. So, next we have assumed that the uh, surface reaction is the limiting reaction. So, therefore, all the other reaction rates really do not contribute. So, the key reaction which key rate which contributes to the overall reaction rate of this uh, heterogeneous reaction is basically the uh, surface reaction. So, we said that it is a surface reaction limiting. So, therefore, the rate of generation of toluene should actually be equal to the rate of the surface reaction, the rate at which the surface reaction is occurring because it is the limiting step and so that will be given by K s into P H 2 partial pressure of hydrogen multiplied by the concentration of the sites in which the toluene is adsorbed minus the concentration of benzene that is adsorbed to the catalyst surface and then multiplied by the partial pressure of methane divided by the corresponding equilibrium constant. Okay. Now, this also means that the other reaction rates actually have to be 0. So, that also means that the R adsorption divided by the corresponding K h is approximately equal to 0 and also R desorption divided by the corresponding constant is also approximately 0. Okay. Now, from this we can actually deduce that the concentration of the benzene which is adsorbed to the vacant sites is actually equal to K B P B into C B. Okay. Similarly, the concentration of the vacant sites I mean concentration of the sites on which toluene is adsorbed is actually given by K T P T and C V. So, this is actually obtained by setting R adsorption divided by K A equal to 0. Okay, this is obtained by setting up this, this particular equivalence by setting up R adsorption divided by K A to be approximately 0. Now, in addition to this, the total number of sites in a given catalyst is approximately constant. Okay. So, we can now depict that by saying if C t is the total number of sites in the catalyst that should be equal to the total number of vacant sites plus the sites on which toluene is adsorbed plus the sites on which the benzene is adsorbed because these are the two possible ones that can in principle be adsorbed onto the surface because we assume that hydrogen is primarily in the gas phase and so is methane. 
So therefore, C total should be equal to vacant sites plus the concentration of the sites in which the toluene is adsorbed plus the concentration of the sites on which benzene is adsorbed. Okay. So by using this in this conservation property and also the expressions for the uh, concentration of toluene adsorbed onto the catalyst site and the concentration of benzene adsorbed onto the catalyst site, we can find that the concentration of the vacant site is given by C T divided by 1 plus K B partial pressure of benzene plus K T into partial pressure of toluene. So, if we know what is the rate limiting step and if adsorption desorption processes in this particular case are not the rate limiting step, then we will be able to estimate the an amount or concentration of the vacant site in terms of the observable quantities that is the partial pressure of benzene, partial pressure of toluene or the measurable quantities. Okay. So, now, so once we know the concentration of the vacant site, we can now go back and try to estimate what is the overall rate at which the heterogeneous reaction is occurring. So, because surface reaction is the limiting reaction, so the reaction rate is now given by K s into C total divided by 1 plus K t p partial pressure of toluene plus K b p b multiplied by partial pressure of hydrogen K t p t minus K b P B into P M divided by K S. Okay. So, this can be obtained simply by plugging in the expression for the vacant site catalyst concentration into the expression for the reaction rate and, and we can obtain this particular expression. Okay. So, from here we can rewrite this as minus R T prime equal to K S C T so, pull out k t from the expression divided by 1 plus k t p t plus k b into p b that multiplied by partial pressure of H 2, partial pressure of toluene minus partial pressure of benzene, partial pressure of methane divided by another constant k p. Okay. So, this k p is nothing but the equilibrium constant of the surface reaction multiplied by the corresponding uh, constants for the adsorption of toluene and the adsorption of benzene. Okay. Note that K p can be determined from the thermodynamic data of the overall reaction. Now, suppose if we neglect the reverse reaction, if we suppose we say that the total amount of the, the reaction primarily goes in the forward direction. So, if we neglect the reverse reaction. neglect reverse reaction, then we will see that the rate can actually be given by K s which is the corresponding rate constant for the surface reaction multiplied by C t which is the total number of catalyst sites which is available in the catalyst and K t which is actually the corresponding constant absorption constant for toluene and partial pressure of hydrogen, partial pressure of toluene divided by 1 plus K b P b plus K t into P t. Okay. So, by clubbing in the 3 the K s C t and K t into one constant, we can write this as K into partial pressure of H 2, partial pressure of toluene divided by 1 plus K b P b plus K t into P t. Okay, so, that can be written as this expression here and so now we can actually rearrange this expression and we can rewrite, rewrite this as rearrange the expression as partial pressure of hydrogen, partial pressure of toluene divided by the corresponding rate should be equal to 1 by k plus k b p b divided by k plus k t p t divided by k. Okay. The final form of the rate expression is actually a linear equation. So, the, so with this we have actually found the, the second step. So, remember that there are four steps here. First we deduce the rate law 
and then we find the mechanism. So, what we have done is we have found the mechanism and after we found the mechanism, we now need to go ahead and estimate the rate parameters. So, in order to estimate the rate parameters, it is useful to write in this, it is useful to write in the form of this rearranged expression and you can see that the there are three constants which are present, one is k, the other one is k b, another one is k t. So, now these three constants need to be estimated and we will have to use the experimental data in order to estimate these constants. So, when we write the expression in this form here, then we will be able to use the experimental data and we will be able to perform certain regression analysis in order to estimate these parameters. So, the rearranged equation can actually be written as A plus B into partial pressure of benzene plus C into partial pressure of toluene minus Z equal to 0, where Z is given by partial pressure of H2, partial pressure of toluene divided by the rate which is measured experimentally and A is given by 1 by K and B is given by K B by K and C is given by K T by K. So, once we have experimental data which is presented in the in the experiments that have been measured. So, as can be seen from these experimental data. So, the partial pressure can be measured, the partial pressure of toluene, hydrogen, methane, benzene have all been measured and different reaction rates have been measured under these conditions. So, using this data one can perform a regression analysis and using the regression analysis one can find these constants A, B and C. So, use experimental data. and one can perform a linear regression analysis. Linear regression analysis and using the linear regression analysis, we can now find these constants A, B and C. Okay. So, once we know these three constants, then we will be able to estimate what is the value of k, we will be able to estimate the value of k b and we will be able to estimate the value of k t. And and then we can find out by, by using the experimental data which was presented, the, the, the constants have been found and from the data k will be equal to for the data that is shown to you, the k will be equal to 6.18 into 10 power minus 4 moles per atmosphere square multiplied by kilogram catalyst per minute and K B which is the corresponding equilibrium adsorption desorption constant for uh, benzene is comes out to be 3.5760 atmosphere minus 1 and K T turns out to be about 1.48 atmosphere minus 1. Okay. So, these are the constants that have been estimated from the experimental data using the rate law mechanism that we have just found out and by performing a linear regression analysis on the experimental data. Okay. Now, what do we do with this data? Okay. So, what we can do is we can we can estimate some some other information, we can deduce some other information in addition to these. For example, we can find out what is the ratio of the ratio of the sites on which the toluene is adsorbed to the sites on which benzene is adsorbed. Okay. So, how do we do this? because we have assumed that the surface reaction is a limiting step. So, the concentration of the adsorbed sites on which uh, toluene is adsorbed is given by C V multiplied by the corresponding equilibrium constant adsorption desorption constant K toluene multiplied by the corresponding partial pressure. So, using that expression we can rewrite this as by substituting those expressions, we can rewrite this as C V K T into P T divided by C V k b into p b. So, that is given by, so therefore, cancelling the vacant sites, we will see that this is equal to k t into, if the total partial pressure at the inlet of the reactor is given by p t naught, then p t is given by p t naught multiplied by 1 minus x, where x stands for the conversion of that particular reaction, okay, divided by k b, which is the corresponding adsorption desorption constant multiplied by P T naught 
into x and this is equal to k t into 1 minus x divided by k b into x. Okay. Suppose, if the conversion x is about 0.25 that is it is a 25 percent conversion, then we can plug in these numbers and we will see that this is equal to 1.48 divided by 3.57 multiplied by 0.75 divided by 0.25. Okay. So, this is approximately equal to 1.24. So, what this suggests is that the number of sites on which the toluene is adsorbed is actually about 25 percent more than the number of sites on which benzene is adsorbed for the given set of experimental conditions. Okay. So, that is an important piece of information that one can actually deduce. So, if one need, needs to have a, a 25 percent conversion or x to be 0.25, then the 25 percent of the sites has to be greater than uh, excuse me, the number of sites on which the toluene is adsorbed has to be greater greater than 25 percent greater than that of the number of sites on which uh, the benzene benzene is adsorbed. Okay. So, the so let us get back to the algorithm of designing a reactor. So, we looked at rate law, we looked at the mechanism and by using the regression analysis, we found out what is the rate parameters that is the parameter that is involved in the rate law. So, the next step is actually to design a reactor. So, let us consider a, a tubular reactor filled with catalyst. So, we get into the reactor design. So, let us consider a tube which is filled with catalyst, which is filled with catalyst. And if F T naught is the molar flow rate at which toluene is actually entering this particular reactor, and let us assume that F T is the molar flow rate at which the toluene leaves the reactor. Now, if I take a small element and if the total weight of catalyst which is packed till that location is w and the weight of catalyst packed at the other end of the element is w plus delta w then we can write a simple mass balance in order to account for what is happening inside the reactor so the mass balance is what enters the element what enters the element minus what leaves this element plus whatever is generated in this particular element in this element whatever is generated in this element should be equal to the amount of material that is being accumulated in that element. So, what enters that element it is the F T that is the molar flow rate of T at W where the weight of the catalyst up to that point is w minus the molar flow rate f t of toluene at w plus delta w plus if the reaction rate is minus r t then then r t prime multiplied by delta w equal to 0. So, that is the rate law. Okay. So, where r t prime is the generation of the rate at which the toluene is being generated and delta w is basically the amount of catalyst which is packed in that particular element. Okay. So, we can simply rewrite this as f t w plus delta w minus f t w equal to r t prime into delta w. Okay. And so this can be rewritten as d f t divided by d w equal to r t prime. Okay. Now, f t can be written in terms of the conversion that is equal to f t naught into 1 minus x. So, substituting the expression for 
uh, the relationship between the molar flow rate of toluene and conversion. We can rewrite this as minus F T naught into d x by d w equal to R T prime. Okay. So, therefore, d x by d w equal to minus R T prime divided by F T naught. So, that is the performance equation. Now, by assuming that it is a, a plug flow reactor, by assuming that the reactor is a, a plug flow reactor. Now, moment we find the moment we write the model equation for the reactor, we need to now plug in the rate law. So, we know that the rate law is given by K into the partial pressure of hydrogen, partial pressure of toluene divided by 1 plus K B into partial pressure of benzene plus K T into partial pressure of toluene. So, we can now plug in this rate law into the model equation and then we will be able to estimate what is the how the conversion changes, how much toluene is actually being consumed inside the reactor. Okay. Now, in order to do that, we need to now express the partial pressures of toluene in terms of the uh, conversion. So, we can do that. So, partial pressure of toluene is given by the concentration of toluene multiplied by R into T using an ideal gas law. And from stoichiometric relationship, this can actually be expressed as C T naught into 1 minus x divided by 1 plus epsilon x into R T multiplied by P divided by P naught into T divided by T naught, where P naught is the total inlet pressure, total inlet pressure and epsilon is basically given by y t naught into delta, where y t naught is the is the partial pressure of toluene at the inlet divided by the total pressure at the inlet and delta is the change in the number of moles. And so, because this particular in this particular reaction, the number of moles is actually 0. So, therefore, this epsilon is equal to 0, which accounts for the change in the volume. And if we assume that it is isothermal, if the if we assume that the reaction is conducted under isothermal conditions, isothermal conditions, then T by T naught is equal to 1. Okay. So, now using these assumptions, we can now rewrite the, we can now express the pressure, partial pressure of toluene in terms of the conversion as P T naught multiplied by 1 minus x into P by P naught. Okay. Now, P is essentially the pressure at that particular location and so if I call that as y, so then you can write this as P T naught into 1 minus x into y, which is the ratio of the pressure at that location divided by the total inlet pressure. Okay. Now, uh, similarly we can write the partial pressure of hydrogen as P T naught multiplied by theta H 2 minus x into y and partial pressure of benzene can be written as P T naught into x where theta H 2 is the ratio of the concentration feed ratio of the amount of hydrogen which is present in the feed with respect to the amount of toluene which is present in the feed. So, in order to find the conversion profile as a function of the catalyst weight, we need to estimate this quantity y which is the ratio of the local pressure with respect to the total pressure at the inlet. So, how do we find this? We can actually use the Ergon equation, we can use the Ergon equation in order to find this ratio, find this quantity y. So, the Ergon equation can actually be written as dy by dw equal to minus alpha by 2y into 1 plus epsilon x into t by t naught. Okay. So, so, what we have seen so far in today's uh, in this lecture is essentially how to use the experimental data in order to find out what is the deduce the rate law which corresponds to the particular heterogeneous reaction 
and then using that rate law and to find using the observations from the experiment to understand and deduce a mechanism by which that particular heterogeneous reaction perhaps occurs and what is the rate limiting step in that particular series of uh, in that particular heterogeneous reaction. Now, once we find this rate limiting step then we can actually uh, using the rate law we can write the rate expressions for each of these steps and by identifying the rate limiting step we can find out what is the rate of reaction in terms of the observable or measurable quantities and from that we will be able to use that rate law expression find the rate law expression that we have derived in terms of the measurable quantities and use the actual measurements and the reaction rate and plug it in and using a regression analysis we can find out the rate constants and the other constants which is involved in the reaction rate law. Thank you.